late Michael Joseph Savage said in 1936, variation in design while conforming to generous standards of space and equipment. These are typical state house plans. Two bedrooms, a living room, kitchen and a sunroom. This has three bedrooms, the living room, the kitchen, the mill space with large windows facing into the sun. Houses are let by the State Advances Corporation. The state has built over 20,000 houses, but there are still 26,000 families on the urgent list. Some will have to wait at least two years. Many are desperate. This is a world story. People pleading for homes. But we must have a place. For the two children, there are four of us living in one room. We have to share the conveniences with five other families. We can't go on living like that. I'll note what you say on your file. We're dealing with 1939 and 1940 applications. I'm afraid some of them are just as urgent as yours. We're going to do what we can for you. But what is being done? A good deal is being done. Returned servicemen get 50% of all new houses. They're also being trained in the building trades as a rehabilitation measure. Special schools give them an intensive training in bricklaying, plastering, painting and paper hanging. Carpenters under this scheme are fully qualified in two years. Substitute methods and materials are being tried. Experiments have been made with prefabrication. Whole settlements are being built in one piece. But we're short of timber. We're milling more timber than ever before, but the demands are enormous. As much timber is required for other purposes as for houses. The production of cement has been greatly increased, but so has the demand. For more cement, we need more coal and more shipping. These are world shortages. There have been shortages in roofing materials. Baths and stoves and other fittings have been short. Not only do we have to build enough fittings for new houses, but because production almost ceased during the war, we need many replacements. Six years of war production have used up our stockpiles. We have much catching up to do. As far as the future is concerned, we can only estimate our requirements and our possibilities, but we know what we have done in the past. In 1935, we had more than 40,000 families needing homes. This was a major housing problem. Then a great building trend started to eat into this mass of homeless people. By 1939, we were building over 8,000 houses a year. But during 1940, house building had to give way to defense building. We almost ceased building houses. By 1944, victory was on the way. We could commence to build again. If we had not had to switch to war production, we would have had at least 22,000 more houses. Our housing problem would have been almost solved. But without victory, no effort would have been worthwhile. So we have 26,000 families who still need homes. Our aim in the post-war battle for homes is to house these people whom the war deprived of homes. And here are the forms of future cities. Tall white buildings rising out of the past, out of the drab of our old, unplanned cities. Here is living near the crowds, near the noise. Only some of us want this. 
Small communities like tiny villages set down in our cities. Lawns and flowers and a community hall. Some want this. And individual houses to give us independence, to give us the most sunlight and the greatest freedom. A man likes a place of his own. But we don't want crowding and boredom and busy streets. How will we plan this new living? Self-contained communities are being built on the outskirts of our cities. This project at Trentham is planned so the houses will surround a park in which will be sports grounds and schools and shops and theatres. Paths will link them all together. Where the path meets a road, there'll be an overbridge. When the children go to school or we go shopping, we won't be dodging cars. And in our shopping areas, we'll find a series of courts, free of traffic, planned to group shops and offices and recreation. Our quiet streets will be close to the city through fast transport systems, but we will live with space about us and order and room for the sun to get in. After a hundred years, we're learning to build to suit our way of life. Here we have the simplicity and light and good design that we began with. These houses are the evidence of how well off we are. They're an important part of our standard of living. It's a standard that's constantly being raised. New Zealanders want to see the result of victory in order and progress in a better standard of living for every New Zealander. They want homes, for a home is the basis of the simple things that made victory worthwhile, the things that men gave their lives for. We know now that we can build communities that we are pleased to live in. We know that the solution of our housing problem lies in large-scale planning, and that the future of housing depends on a community effort by the people. We know that we can plan the future away from the confusion of the past.